The global climate crisis is not only impacting the places we live, it is also threatening the very food we eat. Volatile temperature swings together with unpredictable droughts and floods have left farms devastated from the U.S., Asia to Africa. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's attack on Ukraine also expose how vulnerable global supply chains are. In Turkey, one solution to combating this food insecurity is vertical farming. Turkey is home to the world's second deepest indoor vertical farm center at 30 meters deep. Established in Istanbul between the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and private companies, the indoor farm hopes to provide clean, reliable food supplies to people living right in the city. Using 95% less water than traditional farming, these urban food growing centers hope to alleviate already strained water supplies caused by long-running droughts. Vertical farming, which practices dense indoor agriculture by stacking crops vertically, has been hailed as a way to reduce land usage and water that traditional farms have relied on for thousands of years. And for more on the future of vertical farming, I'm joined by Stella Sai from Vilnius. She is with the Yes Health Group, which is a pioneering clean technology company advocating for sustainable and pesticide free vertical farming. And Professor Levant Kunas is a climate scientist at Boazic University here in Istanbul. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talks. So Levant, what's the significance of this project launched in Istanbul where 16 million people live and what kind of a role um, could vertical farming play in the future of Turkey's food security? When we talk about Turkey, we have serious climate problems and uh, the drought is going to be much worse in the future. And uh, even this year, we didn't have serious rain until this time. Yes. So water is extremely important for us. And this vertical farming systems are basically using the water in a very sustainable way and as good as it gets, therefore, we need these systems more and more in Turkey and also in the Eastern Mediterranean or even all through the Mediterranean where growing food with water is going to be extremely difficult in the future. So Stella, why has vertical farming become so important? I mean, how old is this type of agriculture? Um, I think it, there are many three reasons here. Um, one is that this kind of uh, vertical farming technology allows us to grow uh, food in like almost anywhere in the world mm -hmm. by using the like controlled environment uh, technology and also the artificial lightings. And the second is that um, in this kind of way, we can avoid using uh, pesticides to grow the food. And then third thing is that uh, in the near future, we're going to uh, lack of the farmer in this world. So by developing this kind of technology that we can attract more young people to join the farming industry. So you think with this technology, everyone can become a farmer even in the middle of a city? Yes, correct. Young okay. people like, for example, me, that I, I, I'm a farmer, a vertical farmer. All right. So, um, Levan, Turkey is quite a newcomer to the system. What should the roadmap uh, to spread it across the country? Uh, I'm not quite sure whether our agricultural system is very much ready to do something like that because we are having serious difficulty in explaining to our farmers that the old style uh, watering of all of the agriculture, which is the wild type, where you open the gates and flood the fields, kind of uh, mm -hmm. watering is extremely difficult uh, to get away from in Turkey. And it's going to be a terrific time to tell them, look, okay, we need to go to a different kind of farming where you will be using uh, with drops of water mm -hmm. during agriculture and not that kind of uh, flooding the field. So we are going to be having a nice time. So uh, Stella, what does it offer different compared to the uh, traditional agriculture when it comes to geography and climate? I mean, could it supplant traditional agriculture? Um, I would say that uh, in the future, vertical farming won't um, like, um, like it, there will be still traditional farming in this world. I think vertical farming, we're doing, uh, we're growing the crops that uh, traditional farming 
uh, can grow in a sustainable way. So, um, Levan, can you talk to us about the climate change role? Um, it's, I mean, how is it pushing people to search for alternative systems? And where do people stand now? I mean, is there a collective approach to fight the climate uh, crisis? When we talk about this climate issue altogether, what happened is about 15,000 years ago, uh, the temperature stabilized. Before that time, there were large fluctuations, maybe three, four degrees on the average temperatures mm -hmm. all through the globe. And in the last 15,000 years, the temperatures were more or less stable. And that stability showed us that we can grow food and we can basically predict what the temperature or the precipitation is going to be in the next six months up to a year. And we could grow food uh, having that knowledge. But unfortunately, at the no moment, we are losing that knowledge. That means we will not be able to feed these 8 billion people we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to find other ways of doing the same thing because climate or the weather is actually not on our side anymore. And this is a new way of doing business. So, Stella, is this vertical farming scalable? I mean, could such projects feed the world? or they could only cater to the needs of small populations. What's the target here? Yeah, um, when we talk about feed the world, we're mostly uh, more uh, talk about the staple crops, right? But I would be very honest now that vertical farming now, uh, we are focusing more on the leafy greens, vegetables. And uh, by growing, uh, by using our technology, for example, now I'm in venues, um, together with our local partner called Lee Food, we're actually building a farm which will become the largest uh, vertical farm in Europe in a few months. So I would say it's scalable by using the right uh, technology and implement the right business model. It's scalable. So, um, Leon, what should the um, what should be the role of governments in supporting uh, these alternative agriculture systems? In every government, we have the, basically the same problem. I mean, if they come up with lots of regulations on how to do this and how to grow food and not to grow food, people will be having a hard time because at the moment, this vertical farming in itself is difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, when we get uh, lots of extra government regulations, then it's going to be even more difficult. So the government should make life easier for people who would like to change the style of farming or add another style of farming to the present one. Mm. So, um, Stella, if I'm not mistaken, vertical farms are expensive to build compared with conventional outdoor farms. How has this energy uh, crunch uh, engulfing the world following Russia's attack on Ukraine impacted their operations so far? Yeah, um, the electricity price in the past months are um, like uncontrollable. But um, um, in in the near future, that I, I think um, our solution is that we will use the renewable um, electricity for example, now we're we're buying from electricity from a, like a um, solar panel company, and we fix the price. So I, I think there is a way to um, to to avoid the electricity like un uncontrollable um, price going up and down uh, by fixing the electricity price and using the renewable ones. So do you still have the view that uh, these farms are uh, viable and feasible? Because, I mean, we don't know the future of the conflicts yet. Right. I still believe that this is a very promising uh, industry because that at Yes Health Group, we are continuously lower down the cost. When we call, uh, talk about cost, is both um, CapEx and OPEX. And... Um, uh, I, we, we truly believe that vertical farming is not just uh, one uh, technology uh, uh, rule, rule everything here, that we need to find a right and sweet spot in this industry. So yes, it's true that electricity price can inf influence a lot, but that won't make this industry um, 
go like a bad. Mm, so, Levant, apart from building these alternative systems, what should be done to counter the negative impacts of the climate change? And how do you think the world has responded to that up until now? Uh, awful. I mean, that's very simple. We are not doing basically anything uh, to stop climate change. Therefore, we people should take the matter into our hands and uh, try to protect ourselves. And all of these systems are basically to protect ourselves. I mean, vertical farming is a very nice method of uh, producing all of the green leaves that we need uh, in our daily diet. And therefore, we have to produce it without using much water. The same thing is, as you are showing at the moment, I mean, we have to build our houses in different places, in different ways. All right, Levant and Stella, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.